move on to our second recipe. And this is an interesting one. Um, more and more, I learn about the depth of knowledge that Jeremy has from his, uh, um, yeah, about culinary and cooking and foods and the world. Um, so this second recipe is called pastelon, and it's a Puerto Rican inspired dish, um, which Jeremy will tell us more about that. But what I know from what I've learned is that it's very rich in protein and protein is very important for cancer treatment um, recovery because the protein is the one nutrient that helps you to rebuild your um, tissue, your muscles, it improves bone strength and it can also support the immune system. And then um, the plantain that's used instead of the potato in this dish also adds some more soluble fiber, which we talked about earlier uh, in the previous recipe about um, acting as a, a gel to, to um, promote complete well-born bowel movements. Um, and it's also soft in texture. So I, I'm, I'm assuming that you can change the texture. So if you need it to be really soft, it's possible. It's that versatile, uh, especially if you're recovering from surgery and you've been told to follow a soft diet. Okay, off to the kitchen. Thank you, Daniela. Yes, so we are making, uh, this is one of my favorite dishes. This is, uh, like Daniela mentioned, um, originates from, you'll see it actually in Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic as well, some, some slight differences there. Um, but it is essentially, uh, I guess the comparison would be like a lasagna or like a shepherd's pie, right? But using, I think the key ingredient here is the plantain. And if you never used plantain before, you'll see them in the grocery store and you're like, oh, those are massive bananas or plantains. Um, and what they, you'll see them like this. So they're like, look like giant bananas. Um, some of them are very green. Some of them will be a little more yellow, closer to like a ripe banana look to it. Um, and those are, you know, both options. The greener they are, the less ripe they are, and the more savory they will be, right? So you're not going to get a lot of sweetness out of it. So for a dish like this, that's okay. That's actually what I'm looking for. Um, if it is on the riper side, um, you can still use it, but you're going to get a little more sweetness out of out of the banana, so or the, the plantain. So it all depends on, on what you're going for. Um, I think traditionally it's probably on the greener side, um, but um, again, I'll mention uh, this uh, pastelon is it's inspired by this dish. Uh, I had it a few times, the Puerto Rican version, which I love. Uh, definitely more of a comfort food, um, but uh, we're 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 working within. Um, some of the ingredients that we can choose for for today, right? That we want to highlight, um, and also, um, you know, playing off of our memories of shepherd's pie. If you're more familiar with shepherd's pie, then I think this will definitely um, be something very similar. So, plantain to prepare it, we're going to cut the top and the bottom off, and then carefully with your knife, um, with your fingers out of the way, just create a little slit down the back. I'm not going in too deep, but just so that I'm cutting through the peel. And then from here, you can pretty much use your finger the rest of the way and just stick your thumb in and travel down the edge of the plantain. It is, you'll find, especially the ones that are less ripe, a little more challenging to peel than like your traditional banana, but it's it's still pretty easy. You're, just, you're using your fingers the whole way, just running your thumb on the inside of the peel until it's removed and you're left with the plantain. And with this, now you might need a few more. I've already, I've used most of them. So I only have one left and it's really just to show you, um, but I'm going to cut it. You can slice it in thin slices. Um, you can, I've seen it done and it might be more of the Dominican style, but done almost like a mash. So like Daniela mentioned, if, if you require like a softer diet, that might be a good idea where you boil uh, the plantain um, and treat it very similar to a potato. Uh, boil it so it's really nice and soft and mash it so that it's the consistency of a potato. Uh, for us, we're going to, I'm slicing it into strips, almost like not super thin, um, 
looks like spears. So I cut it in half, quartered it, and then I'm slicing those quarters in half so that I have these nice little spears, okay? And then with this, again, traditionally they're fried. It's probably why it tastes so much. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bake them. Um, I, and I still get a really nice effect, even though I'm baking them. You can do this even just like in a pan. I like to do it in the oven, especially if I have a lot of them. Get a big pan, a little bit of olive oil, too much, pop that up. And then you can sprinkle it with a little salt if you want, and then into the oven, uh, 425. So 425, 450, um, just to get a little bit of color, we're gonna soften these up a little bit. So it might take like 10, 15 minutes um, while you get the rest of your ingredients prepped, they should be ready to go. So I like that you're baking them because frying would be harder to digest and, and might not be something that is, is recommended. So I love that you're baking them. And I also, you know, love that you're using your parchment paper to make cleanup easy. Oh, we have more parchment paper on the way. Don't you worry. Uh, okay, so I'm going to bring you closer to the pan. So we have the topping, right? So the mashed potato, we're using that plantain. That's ready to go. Um, traditionally, this would be, um, you would use ground beef for this, which you can use for sure. Uh, we're using a um, slightly leaner choice. So we're going with some ground turkey. You can use ground chicken. If you, I've never made a vegetarian version of it, but I can imagine absolutely if you wanted to do something like beans, like cooked black beans or cooked chickpeas, or even like crumbled uh, firm tofu as well. Uh, I'll have to try, I'll have to test out a, a vegetarian version of it. Um, I'm sure you can do that. Um, but for today, we're using our ground turkey and I'm just sort of cooking it off in a pan on its own, which is what I did here. Uh, I wanted to save you the time. Uh, as exciting as watching turkey cook is, um, I've done it ahead, just a little bit of color just to get some of that flavor, some of that caramelization. And then take it took that uh, put that in a bowl and then for our veg so again traditionally you would use a sofrito for this what's a sofrito very similar to a classic mirepoix you have your carrots uh onion maybe celery garlic in there as well um, but some of these ingredients daniela they can be a little challenging for some people to digest right Def definitely, because many times people are told to follow a low fiber diet and, and what they're referring more so to is insoluble fibers and insoluble fibers. They're not dissolved like a soluble fiber. They um, travel through your, your gut. And if you've had treatment and your gut is sensitive or if you've had a resection, um, you don't want this uh, to be traveling through your gut. It can be irritating. It can increase um your symptoms of diarrhea so using what you're using are considered to be the lower uh fiber veggies and if i can see through the camera yes also i see the peppers you've removed the skins and seeds so that is something that you want to do when you're trying to remove some of the the residue or indigestible fibers yeah it also looks colorful so it, that's that's great i love that you know i love color all right, so yes, like Danielle mentioned, we have some carrots peeled, just peeled carrots and just diced up. You can do this in a food processor as well, save some time. Um, we have some, uh, your wax beans, you can use your green or your yellow. Those would be good to use. Um, and I just cut them up a little bit smaller here. And then like Daniela mentioned, the peppers, but the roasted peppers. You can buy these already roasted in a jar. So that saves you a lot of time uh, with the skins and the seeds removed. Um, just go through it because sometimes you might have a seed, you know, here and there, even in the jarred version. Um, but at least the convenience of, of you know, uh, having it already roasted and peeled is there, which is great. So I have a, a pan, medium heat. This is the pan that I cooked the turkey in. And I'll add my carrots, green beans, my roasted peppers, even with some of the liquid in there is okay. Bring you a little closer because like the yellow mentioned, I just love the color in this, right? So we have the red, the orange, the green in there, 
And then to season this up, again, we're, we're not adding the garlic and the onion, right? Because like Daniela mentioned, those can be challenging for some people to digest. But if you are able to tolerate the powdered versions of it, those are a great way to still get the flavor uh, without having to add the whole uh, ingredients in here. So um, I'm going to add in this case, a little bit of onion powder. Yeah, onion powder. I always mix up the onion and the garlic powder. That looks similar. A little bit of garlic powder. So getting still some of that onion and that garlic flavor in here. Um, if you are okay with dried herbs, you know, a little dried oregano, which would be traditional to the dish. Um, and then I like the addition of smoked paprika. Um, in the versions I've had, I don't think they've added smoked paprika, maybe regular paprika, uh, but I like that smokiness that it does provide, which is nice. Adds a little bit more flavor there. And this way I'm still using the vegetables and the ingredients that are, might be a little easier to digest, but I'm, I'm still getting the flavor, right? Which is important. So medium high heat. Uh, I just want to soften the carrots up a little bit. The uh, red roasted with red peppers, they're already nice and soft and the green beans really don't take any time at all. And we'll be baking this afterwards. So once we have the flavors coming through, I'm gonna go ahead and add that ground turkey, which I've already cooked off. Stir this through. So it's nice and combined and get those beautiful colors. And again, the flavors. Also a pinch of salt. I've already added a little bit of salt to the turkey, but you can add a little salt and pepper to season it to taste there for sure. And I'm getting a little bit of moisture off of the veg, so I'm good with that. If it looks very dry, you can definitely add like a splash of water or a splash of broth to that just to provide a little bit more moisture. Um, and then, like Daniela mentioned as well, if you're looking for something that's a little more soft or minced and moist um, consistency, then definitely go ahead and add a little bit more broth. So you have a little more of that gravy that will sort of just naturally develop as a base. So a little bit of that broth there, incorporating some of that moisture back. And then that's it. Once that's done, like cook it like a couple minutes, once the turkey's already cooked, which is good, so we just want to incorporate everything, we'll get our dish ready. If this is an oven-proof dish, which it is, uh, I could just add my plantain on top, good to go, add it directly into the oven. Um, but I'll just show you how you can do this with a baking dish as well. That's how I pat it. Um, get a little bit of parchment. Crumple it up, a little bit of water. And then we'll unravel it. And that way it fits nicely, tucking it into my baking dish here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add this mixture. It's it, the aromas are and Even though I don't have that whole garlic and the whole onion, I'm still getting a lot of that flavor. I think this is the perfect size. You did not plan it out in advance, sort of winging it, but I think we did it. So right to the top. Now, I will say as well that uh, the versions that I've had, which is the Puerto Rican version, um, they, were more, they were more like a lasagna. So they were layered, where you would have a little bit of the meat, then a layer of the plantain, then a little bit more of the meat, and then plantain on top, uh, which you can absolutely assemble it that way. But when I made this before, I I made it more like a traditional shepherd's pie. The filling was on the bottom, and then the plantain was on the top, which I found a little bit easier to construct. It was a little bit quicker, um, and I'm still getting that delicious flavor and texture that I'm with. All right, so here's our filling, our plantain. Nice and golden brown. And again, this version, baking it like this, you're gonna get a little bit more texture, right? Which is nice. 
But like Daniela mentioned, if you're, if you're looking for something a little more soft, then definitely instead of baking it, go for more of a boiled mashed version of it. And like this, I am just layering it on top with the, with the mashed version, you would just sort of scoop that mashed plantain on top and spread it over. So tuck it all in there so it's mostly covering. What's great about the plantain is that it also has potassium. So, you know, being similar to the banana family um, or the potato family, it actually has some good potassium. So that electrolyte that we might be losing um, with, with a lot of diarrhea or high ostomy output. So, mm -hmm. And then the last thing, and I love this addition, we're gonna crack a couple eggs and whisk this and then pour it right over top. What this does is it's gonna help to set everything inside so that it, it sort of holds its shape a little bit better. It'll still be a little crumbly, but it'll hold its shape a little bit better uh, versus if it was just loose without the eggs. A little whisk of the two eggs. And then I'm just going to pour it directly over top. And what this will do is it will pass through the plantains. You might keep it together a little shake, a little shake, shake. It'll pass through the plantains and then settle into the filling, filling in the bottom. Uh, and that's it. Now, uh, the versions I've had, and I think traditionally, um, there would be some cheese. You could put some like melted cheese on top. Um, so that is an option. Um, I'm making a dairy-free version here, but you can definitely put some, you know, shredded cheese on top if you like that as well. Um, that's it. Um, cover this into an oven 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it's really just the eggs that have to set and cook. And we're done. We have our finished version here. I'm going to finish mine with a little, little bit of finely chopped herbs, but it's optional. Just for a little bit of color. That looks amazing. And there we have our our take, our inspired version of a pastel. It looks beautiful. And what I really love about this dish, Jeremy, is the versatility. So if the vegetables that you used aren't exactly the vegetables that you can handle, then you can swap that out. And I'll just take a moment to, to mention that you can go to the Colorectal Cancer Canada. They have some great recipes through Nourish Online or University Health Network has a couple of uh, handouts you might want to look at. It's eating, um, eating hints if you have diarrhea or knowing about low fiber um, or partial bowel obstruction if you need to know more about which vegetables you can and can't.